Hey guys, what's going on? Today, I'm going to talk about sharpness. Um, this is going to be part one of my sharpening video. Uh, I didn't want to do sharpening all in one video because first of all, if you don't even know what sharp is, doing a sharpening video doesn't do anybody any good. Um, second of all, uh, I am not a knife expert expert, but I've been handling knives for a very, very long time. Uh, I'm 56 years old. I've been handling knives since I was 12. I've been collecting knives since I saw my first nothing fancy video doing a flash SOG Flash 1 video way back in, I think, 2009, 2008, something like that was when I started. I saw that video and I don't know, it just did something to me and I wanted to be, I wanted to be like nothing fancy. Um, and I got into doing uh, knives and collecting knives and sharpening knives. And then I got into pimping knives for a little while and realized that that was no fun. Um, oh, it is fun. It's fun to customize a knife. It's no fun trying to make people happy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's impossible. Um, so I do know a little bit about stuff, uh, but I am not an expert by any means. I'm not like, uh, Pete over there at Cedric and Ada, who's done so many knife tests and studied so many steels and et cetera, et cetera, or even Nick Shabazz. Um, he's handled so many knives and done so many reviews and he just sees things differently and uh, he's really good at what he does. So I'm not that guy, but I do have a lot of experience with knives. I just, I do, um, doing all kinds of stuff. I kind of wish I didn't throw away all my videos from my old channel and you guys could see, but that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing a past life video thing so you can guys kind of see where I've been and where I am now and why and everything else because I still get a couple of questions. Uh, I had a guy in my last video ask me a question about, uh, he wants to learn more about customizing knives. I'm not going there. <laughs> not even going to go there. Get a Dremel tool, start carving. That's the best thing I can tell you. Um, yeah, I'm not even going there. Get a, get a CNC printer, whatever. Uh, anyway, so sharpness. So let's start with what is sharp? And this is my understanding of what sharp is. And I got a notebook here and I'm going to move these for a second and I'm going to draw a little diagram and this is going to be a real simple and I'm just going to start with showing you what my interpretation of thinking of what sharp is. And this is something that I learned from both YouTube and sharpening my own knives and everything else. And probably the best example I can give is sharpness is when you have two angles that come to a perfect point. That right there, that is sharp. When they come to a perfect point, you are sharp. Now, there's obviously levels of sharpness. So depending on the grit that you use, if you stop at 400 grit on one knife and you stop at 3000 grit on another knife, obviously your uh, sharpness is going to vary. Um, and there's lots of different kinds of edges. And I want to talk about a couple of those. First of all, you have, this would be like a Scandi grind. If your knife was just like that, and that was the back spine of your knife, or like this, um, you don't have, you have, you don't have a, primary and a secondary bevel you just have one bevel that would be like this so or that would be a house you can put a door on it and a window and a chimney made out of stones <laughs> just kidding anyway um so this would be a scandy grind second is just your normal uh, secondary primary bevel type grind, which is like this and goes up and like this. And then at the end of that grind is another little bevel like that. And that's where your sharpness comes from is that little bevel up there. Let me bring that down a little bit so you can see it. And oftentimes actually is, that's not any good. Let's do it right. So here's your spine. And this would be, say, a three-quarter flat grind. And there's your bevel. And this would be a flat grind. And that right there would be, this would be your primary bevel. And this would be your secondary bevel. And that would be the point that you're sharpening right there. And then you have um, hollow grind, where you have a spine. And it curves. That's exaggerated. 
and then it goes to a, a secondary bevel like that. So that would be a hollow grain. And then you have uh, the other way, which is a convex grain, which is like that and like that. And you have two kinds of those. You have a zero convex where it's just round and it comes to a point. And you have convex with a secondary bevel on top. And that's exaggerated again. And that's your sharpness point there. And that's your sharpness point there. But it all boils down to this right here. Sharp is when you get two points, two angles coming together to a perfect point. Um, and the angle of that can dictate a lot of things. Probably the biggest thing the angle can dictate. Well, it dictates two things. Your degree of sharpness, obviously. And I'm going to draw another... Let's just draw, let's draw like that and then and that and then that. So this is say a three quarter flat ground knife. Oops. Right, and three quarter flat ground would be like this one. Right? No, no, not that one. Uh, I don't even have a three-quarter flat ground knife around me. Um, anyway, this is a hollow grain. But this will still work anyway. Three-quarter flat ground would be you have this flat right here, then you have flat ground, and then you have a, your um, secondary or whatever bevel. Some people call this one the primary bevel. Some people call it the secondary bevel. I don't know. It's your sharp bevel. Anyway, where was I? We're we want to get this sharp, right? And what is... So what kind of angle are we going to use? So this is zero. And so this could be whatever. This could be uh, 20 degrees or 16 degrees or 18 degrees, whatever. And then so this degree of angle right here is going to kind of designate how sharp and how long your edge lasts. If you go... 16 degrees per side. So some people would say that's 32 degrees inclusive, whatever. Um, if you go 16 degrees per side and you don't do a third bevel, like a micro bevel, um, you're going to have a very thin edge on your knife. So from there to there is going to be very thin. And what happens there is now all of a sudden, yes, you're going to have a very, very sharp knife. But it isn't going to last as long because this thinness right here is going to have a tendency to be weak. And of course, now there's super steels and things like that that will make it last a little bit longer. But I'll tell you right now, at the end of the day, this nice 154 CM and this nice LMAX. And chemically, chemically, they tell you that this knife should hold an edge longer and it's thinner, so it should slice better. Um, if you actually really, really use, use your knives every single day, uh, it doesn't matter. This edge on this knife and this edge on this knife, uh, neither one's going to really outlast each other, I don't think, in my opinion, um, because you're going to use them until they're dull anyway. And it doesn't matter the steel. I can dull any steel in a day of work at my job. Because I do it all the time. <laughs> One of the reasons I own a lot of pocket knives. Uh, I don't like to use utility knives. I like to use pocket knives. Uh, they're easier to carry. They're fun to use. They fit into my lifestyle, which is doing videos and things like that. They help me test the steel, etc. So, um, cheers. I'm drinking a protein shake. <sighs> so, that's going to help designate your sharpness right there is that angle. So the wider, the thicker the angle, the more durable the edge, but probably not as sharp. Uh, the finer the edge, the finer the angle, uh, the sharper the edge, the less drag you get, obviously, when you're slicing through something, and the better it will cut. And that's something to talk about right off the bat with sharpness is the thickness of the steel. Obviously, I'm going to be able to get this because it's only about a sixteenth of an inch thick steel. And it's super, super, super micro thin behind the edge. 
and this is the knife we're going to sharpen in my sharpening video, um, I'm going to be able to get this thing razor, razor, razor sharp. Razor sharp. Where this one is pretty dang sharp, and it's actually fairly thin too. It's less than an eighth, but it is not as thin behind the edge, so that creates more drag, and it doesn't really matter how sharp. I could never get this knife as sharp as that knife. Or admit, let me rephrase that. I can get this knife as sharp as that knife, but this knife will always outslice it because it's so much thinner. So, anyways, so that's that. That's my thing. That's how I perceive. That's how I perceive sharpness is getting this point and this point to a perfect point. Um, not like this. Uh, not like this where you have one edge kind of further over than the other, or one edge further over than the other, the other way. Not like this. That's not sharp either, obviously. So the basic thing that you want to do is you want to get this. That's sharp. And so how do you do that? How do I do that? Well, I do that by using a couple different things. Let's start with my sharpening system for pocket knives. Is this right here? This is the KME. I bought this in 2016, I think. I think. It was right very first run when they came out. I bought it right before I saw it on a Nick Chavez video, as a matter of fact, because I couldn't believe for the price what a great sharpening tool you were getting. Oh. I was wondering where that little knife went. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, fairly sharp too. I don't even remember sharpening it. Anyway, this is the Cold Steel Pendleton Hunter, I think. Great little pocket knife. So anyway, so this is my sharpening device and when I do the actual sharpening video, I'll get more into it, but the basics of it is is these jaws, you push this, they open up, your knife goes in there like that. You tighten this down, it holds the knife in place. You set the angle on this hole right here. Then you take one of these diamond stones, you stick it in that hole right, right there, and you do this, and it makes remove steel and it sharpens the edge. And that's something else I forgot to talk about is the only way you're going to sharpen anything is by removing steel. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the only thing that really, really works. Uh, you can restore an edge a little bit by just rolling it back to straight. That's one of the things that's a good quality about VG10 steel is it rolls instead of chips. So you can just roll it back straight again. Uh, these are the straps that go with it. They're kind of cheap. They fall apart. I don't even really use them anymore. I should just throw them away. Um, so anyway, I've had this system since 2016. So it's nine years old. And the stones, or 17. I don't remember when they came. He very first came out. Anyway, very first came out KME. I've had it ever since. And these stones, although they've worn a little bit, they're still in pretty decent shape. They work just fine. Uh, it takes a little bit longer since they have worn some. Uh, but they still work. I have several stones. I have... All the way from, let's see, where is it? Is this it? Yep, right here, the Beast 50 grit, which I use for reprofiling. And then all the way to 1500 grit. Uh, they're all diamond. They work great. Uh, you don't have to use lubricant with them, but I do. I use water. Um, you don't need oil or anything like that, though, which is really cool. I don't have a base for this because most of my time is I'm sharpening a knife. I'm sitting on the couch anyway, watching a movie. And so I don't need a base for that. Um, and I'll probably never get one. I keep thinking about getting a new system. And every time I think about it, I think, meh. I, and I just don't end up doing it. And right there is shows what kind of angles you're at. And it's close. It's not super accurate. Because, of course, if you differ your length this way, you're going to change this angle. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's my system and in my sharpening video, we'll get more in detail of it, but that's what I use. 
and I grind on these blades until I get a good edge. And right now, probably the reason I got this knife out is because it's probably one of my sharpest knives. Anyway, and then once I get it ground down really good and I get it sharp 1500 grit, I've got this here old strop that I've had for years. Um, you can see it's got a lot of metal impregnated in it. It's getting about time to recondition it, but it works great. Um, I do it like this or like this. Depends on the day of how I feel. I've heard good and bad about both methods. And that's how I do my stropping. And there is some people who will tell you that stropping doesn't actually sharpen your knife. And I disagree because you're removing steel. So, and there's giving me heartache. I don't know why it's catching right there. It shouldn't be. Huh. Weird. There we go. So, anyway, it's sharp. I can hair, shave hairs with it. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. I can get a toilet tube and cut it in half and what have you. So, that's what you end up with is an edge like that. Um, that's one of the other things of talking about sharpness is the finer the grit, the sharper you get. And, in my opinion, the more polished you get it, the, uh, let's try this one here. The more polished you get the edge, the longer the edge will last. That's just my opinion. I don't have proof, proof of that, but it just makes sense to me that a polished edge takes longer. So, and I don't know, what is this? Oh, this is OS 10A. Um, the AUS steels, OS 8 and OS 10, one thing I can say that's good about them is they do take a wicked edge fairly easy. They sharpen pretty nice. Um, this knife, I do differently. I'm gonna use uh, Japanese whetstones with this one, and this will be my second sharpening video after this one. Um, and we'll do a Scandi edge knife so you can see how to do that. And then maybe we'll do a fixed blade just by hand. I am not really good with a, just a natural by hand sharpening. But I do believe that there are people out there who can get just as good an edge on a knife doing their own sharpening by hand with no guided system as I can with a guided system. So anyway, that's my pre-sharpening video, episode one, whatever you want to call it. I hope you guys are having a happy Easter. Uh, 400 subscriber giveaways coming up fast. We're on 300 and something right now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that baloney. Uh, yeah, get your kids, turn off TV, get outdoors. Toad Sticker out.